listening to Reset Race. You now tuned in to Reset Race. Uh, uh. You're listening to Reset Race. You now tuned in to Reset Race. Put them back on the grill again. We grilling them. Put them back on the grill again. We grilling them. Put them back on the grill again. We grilling them. Back on the grill again. We grilling them. Up. You're listening to Reset Race. Adults need reparations to make America great. Uh, you're tuned in to Reset Race. We no longer starving while others eat off our plate. No. You're listening to Reset Race. We focused on our justice claim. We know what is at stake. Uh, you're tuned in to Reset Race. You'll find out who really done justice and really who fake. On the edge, go back to U.S. Southern plantations. Pennies, Jim Crow, and mass incarceration. Redline and lynchings, we are old from this nation. You're not about justice if you ain't for reparations. IMG, the wise one. Cousin mother intellectual. Samantha bringing fire. Anti-black, we pressing you. No permanent friends and no permanent enemies. Enemies, the backbone of the country, the way you need our energy. You gonna see? Listening to Reset Race, you now tuned in the Reset Race. Uh, uh. You're listening to Reset Race, you now tuned in the Reset Race. Uh, put them back on the grill again. We grilling them, put them back on the grill again. We grilling them, put them back on the grill again. We grilling them, back on the grill again. We grilling them, up. You're listening to Reset Race. Adults need reparations to make America make great. America uh, great. You're tuned in to Reset Race. We no longer starving while others eat off our plate. No. You're listening to Reset Race. We focused on our justice claim. We know what is at stake. Uh, you're tuned in to Reset Race. You'll find out who really about justice and really who fake. Uh, Y'all ready? This is the Latinos on Immigration. Y'all ready for the meat? Ooh, because this... Oh, that was just an appetizer? Oh, this is... Okay, let's ride. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Do you see this clip? 13 minutes. I had to play the whole clip. Okay, so, let's ride. Let, yeah. let me know if we got to stop it. I'll be listening, but this is a good one. Y'all going to enjoy this. This is a five. This is a five. <laughs> Raise your hand if you are for the wall. Woo! I wish y'all could see this video. One and of you that raised your hands for the wall. Why? Why are you for the wall? Every single year through the southern border, there's like 16,000 kids that are brought through the illegal ports of entry for trafficking purposes, uh, labor and sex slavery, which I think it's a terrible crime that we should all get behind, and also women. So. Um, so that is one of the main reasons um, for the wall. It's going to secure our borders. It's going to prevent people from doing these terrible crimes. And obviously, it's national security as well. Anyone that's against the wall, does anyone want to respond? Human trafficking is done right here in Miami. It's done all over the place. A wall didn't start it or won't stop it either. Also, there are people being raped and killed and having the same type of exploitation who are in these ICE detention camps and uh, children are being killed and we don't even know what's happening to them. So, All right, I Sam, mean, if you're going to build right the there. wall, maybe build it around some. All right. See, this is oddly enough. I agree with the Colombian girl, right? You can, you could be against, um, you can be, a, you can be against these things, but you have to be honest about what enables these things, right? Because we have to have a certain level of honesty here. Right. Everybody screaming no borders is helping every coyote on the planet hustle people across the border. It is what it is. Right. There is a reason why there are borders. There's a reason why this trafficking is illegal. And there's a there are several reasons why this trafficking is illegal. And there's a reason why it's happening. A wall or no wall. Honestly, wall is just just a, just a structure. Right. There should be borders should be secured. Period. No if, ands, or buts. Unless the rest of the world is going to be talking about no borders, it's bullshit, right? It's just it's just like being in your parents' house. I'm free, right? But you don't pay no bill, <laughs> right? You don't pay no bills. You don't do nothing in the house, but you free. But you're not free. Somebody's paying all your fucking bills. Somebody's taking care of you. Because you don't pay no bills. Here. Yeah, yeah. I mean. So like it's, it's outside of reality. It really is outside of reality. Anybody else got anything on that? Yeah. Um. This whole thing with the wall, like, I, 
I, I wish this wasn't the, the discussion because the discussion really needs to be about immigration. The wall is not really going to stop the, like the immigration issue. Like it's, exactly. it's not really, it's not really like a pertinent part to this discussion. It's just like symbolic, really. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree hundred percent. Like, and even with this, this whole thing of like arguing about the, the trafficking, like if you're really against that, what you're saying, like if you're against trafficking, building the wall is not going to stop the trafficking. You just, you're basically just saying you want the trafficking to happen in Mexico. You, that's, that's what you're arguing. Like, so, you want to stop the border. Yeah. Like, so really like we need to have an honest discussion about immigration and what this, like the whole wall discussion does is like it diverts that conversation. Yeah. 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 But it's definitely poisoning the well because it's because it's a it's a Trump thing. Right. The wall is a Trump is a Trump thing. It's definitely poisoning the well, the, the, the discussion of the well, the well of this discussion. No question. Yeah. Sam, you got anything? No, I, I'm ready to keep going. Like I said, they they they, they get into the meat on this. Like, y'all, we only a minute in. They get deeper. All right. John, you got better. anything before we go? Uh, let's, 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 let's keep playing. All right, Some me. other areas, maybe build it around the White House so that people stop getting killed like that. <laughs> uh, what I will say is the wall is impractical. Number one, there's certain areas in the country where the wall just, like, it's just impractical. I honestly thought the wall was like a metaphor to just tougher immigration policies, which whatever. But they really want a literal wall. It's impractical in some parts of the country. And number two, there, it's cutting through a lot of reservations. We're talking about Indian land that the government does not own and they want to cut through that land. Those are sovereign nations that they're going to be inviting just for some wall that, again, is impractical in many other areas of the country. And number three, a wall is not going to stop us. We're going to be migrating here regardless. I, I just want to address the, real you know, the whole thing you said about you know, Mex Mexicans being rapists, bringing drugs. First of all, this is, this is true. This is a statement of fact. I mean, Mexicans do bring drugs into this country illegally. Mexicans do come in here and commit murders, commit crimes. And I don't think it, it's uh -oh. appropriate to, to paint with a wide brush all Mexicans coming to this country are doing that because my mom crossed the border to this country twice illegally. I have plenty of family who has done that and they've come here and done good things. My mom came here and her first job was at Taco Bell cutting tomatoes and that, that might be funny, but that's true, that's a fact. So, you know, you, you, it's, not a, it's not appropriate for Trump to paint every Mexican coming here as a murderer or a drug dealer. But the fact is, is that a lot of them are. And in my point of view, let's say we let in 50 Me Mexican, uh, Mexicans to this country, 49 of them are good, good working citizens who want to contribute. If, the one, if one of them kills my daughter, I don't want any of them in the country. Speaking of your family that went through, through this very similar process that I'm about to say, a couple of days ago, Donald Trump was the border. Behind. He was there and he said, our country's full. We cannot take you anymore. He wants to right? close, anymore. He wants to right? close he the was border. Refer, he was referred. But the gag is, I got a homegirl who's the same thing. Um, for first generation, her mother came here illegally. I'm not going to call her what they call them, which you know the term. Mm -hmm. She's not for that shit. She don't give a fuck. She don't give a fuck. She's like, yes, I'm here. My mom came here illegally, but I'm still not for that shit. So mm -hmm. it is what it is. So yeah. this is the thing. When you actually start talking to Latino people, Instead of talking about them, you start to see that there's multiple viewpoints of this. Mm -hmm. And I'm here on my behalf and on the behalf of the Latino community that are here legal. Um, as, a, as an immigrant from El Salvador, I strongly disagree that California is even considering sheltering illegal criminals that have broken the law instead of prioritizing our legal citizens. Look around on the streets. We have homeless sleeping on the streets. We have veterans without no food. We have children without proper care. Are you guys aware the California deficit went from um, seven, uh, 37 million to 300 million in just one year? We cannot afford to be helping illegal, illegal criminals. The use of our tax dollars to fund illegal aliens it's prohibited by the Constitution of the United States. And I learned that when I became a citizen, forcing the taxpayers in California to fund illegal activity is wrong. Right. California needs to protect our legal citizens first. Thank you. Thank God you. God bless your, America. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Just raise the roof, please. Yeah, um, honestly, like, I don't want to jump on you know, either side of what he's talking about, like, like 
the Latinos that want to just pull up the ladder and, uh, you know, whether or not new Latinos should be let, let in and all that goofy shit. My thing is, is that when we get down to it, the reason why Democrats are pushing for, like, you know, trying to get this group into their voting base is because they think they're going to vote a certain way based on these policies that they're pushing for. And like you said, these motherfuckers don't all think the same. Mm -hmm. Like, I really don't give a fuck about whether or not, you know, the morality behind him being like a sellout to his people and all that goofy shit. I really don't want to get into all of that. I don't care. Mm -hmm. But like, if you're trying to tell me that you're not going to pay attention to what the fuck I'm saying and what our voting base as Eidos is saying, because you're worried about these Latinos and you think that you have the the great ideas that are going to win them over when they they're not even thinking like you think they think that's mm -hmm. the fucking problem yeah but i think but i i i agree with you on that but I, but i think i i think but that's the whole thing the whole thing is just to shut us up uh, honestly that's what i think yeah. it is and i and i think that conversation that joe biden had with the with the quote unquote uh black leaders is really em emblematic of that Right. It's like you guys better listen to these people, even though they know it's a fabrication. It's nobody. It's nobody in, in serious mm -hmm. politics that thinks this grouping is a real grouping. You know what I mean? There's nobody yeah. that believes that, you know, but the, but the, the value of it is silencing us. That's the value of it. well, trying to silence us. It ain't work. But go ahead. I'm sorry. No, nah, that's that's basically it. You know. All right. All right, then I'm going to keep going. Thank you, ma'am. Central American migrants, many of whom are fleeing violence, um, who are here to request asylum. So raise your hand, and actually let's start by you. Do you believe that this specific community of Central American okay. I'm sorry, asylum Sam, seekers deserve to come into the United States? Before we, before we get here, right, um, black folks move, have been move, moving fleeing violence since we got here, right? It's been it's been a driver for us since 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 the beginning of our time here. We whether we're trying to um, get away from slavery, whether we're trying to get away from Jim Crow, whether we're trying to get away from uh, uh, um, endemic uh, uh, pandemic level lynchings, violence has always driven us around this around this continent, right? Um, yet we don't get treated as asylum seekers. We get treated as just black folks who just happen to be here, right? And I think that's an important designation. Like um, the discussion was made, a discussion was, there was a discussion of the distinctions between um, uh, Elon Omar's um, uh, experience coming to Minnesota versus the experience of George Floyd when he got to Minnesota. Both of them, fle both of them were fleeing violence in their, in their home states or home countries but one got help and one just got left to the wolves. You see what I mean? So I just wanted to share that. Okay. So before we went on, anybody else got anything on that? Fuck Elhan Omar. Okay. That's cool <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, I got something on that, man. Right, <laughs> you know, where the fuck it like, she, do, she be doing some bullshit. Like, yeah, she absolutely. really be sitting on us on the low, man. Like, she does. I mean, yeah. as far as like, you, you're absolutely right though, MG, man. When, it, you, when you look at it, like, you know what I mean? Like the, the Elon Omar story fleeing from Somalia and shit like that to come to Minnesota. That's why I'll be honest with you, like that Tone Toss video on the on the George Floyd shit is something that I when, when I've tried to get my, my people, like my, my, my homies on like on board with shit, like I, mm -hmm. that's the first video I've shown. Cause I'm like, mm -hmm. yo, that George Floyd story is so you know what I mean? Cause he break it down the way like see that mm -hmm. see he's talking about us, like you know what I'm saying? Like he's talking about you see how we getting fucked over, you know what yeah. I mean? Like when we did it, and mm -hmm. you right, see MG, they treating us like we we, they treat us like we poor white people. They treat us like, because think about it, it's like, right, I came from Mexico to escape all this violence and blah, blah, blah. Man, we've been living in violence. Every day. Like, what the fuck are you talking mm -hmm. about? Like, you know what I mean? Like, we had nowhere to run. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, we, either we want to, first of all, we don't run, but if we wanted to run, where we going to go? Like, like Sam, I think Sam had brought it up, like, motherfuckers tried to run to Canada doing with, well, I think this don't know, Obama years was, oh, yeah. oh, they got to turn around the border. That was a that was a revolving like, door in the border. <laughs> like, yo, right like, you're, you're the police gonna kill me. They're like, yo, nigga, if you don't get your black ass back the motherfucker, mm -hmm. you better get out of here. You know what I'm saying? So that shit mm -hmm. like and, and I also think like I, I didn't talk about, but I think that the wall to me, the wall is like to me, honestly, it's a waste mm -hmm. of time and money. Cause I feel like it's time and money that should be going to our people. You know what I'm saying? Like 
you spend all this money building that shit, they still gonna come. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like if you really want to secure the border, just put more money into the the border patrol and shit like that. You know what I mean? If you want to secure it, like just you feel me? You got man up. If you want to like secure the job program. Yep. It's a job word. It's a job for, and, and it's Mexicans, true. It could Mexicans be, yeah. down there building the border. You got illegal Mexicans down there building the wall right now. You know what I'm saying? Like that's <laughs> my the shit. irony. Not, the irony. <laughs> it's illegal. I'm like, oh my, these motherfuckers is building the wall right now for five dollars. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like five dollars an hour type shit. Like, what the fuck is this shit? Like, this shit is a waste of time for me. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's why I don't talk. You right though. That shit is a distraction to try to get up to kind of subvert our pain talking about asylum seekers and all that. That's why like, I got a lot of empathy for a lot of people, but this shit, like, come on, man. Uh, you feel me? Like, but come on, mm. like, we here. Like, come on. So I just want to go one step further on the fuck Ilhan Omar conversation because y'all didn't no no because y'all didn't say why fuck Ilhan Omar. So the reason why American descendants of slavery say fuck Ilhan Omar is because Ilhan Omar is an ethnic bigot. She has multiple times liked disparaging comments that came against the American descendants of slavery black community. And when she narrowly won her most recent Congress um run white people asked her in a zoom why she had a problem getting black americans to vote for her and instead of addressing the fact that she has not taken time to build any types of relationships with the black american community she mm -hmm. said that black americans american descendants of slavery are jealous of somali immigrants and that's why they don't fuck with her so ilhan omar is a ethnic bigot and that's why we say fuck her so while she's sitting here crying about how people are racist and um Islamophobic to her, she turns around and oppresses Black Americans. The same Black Americans who are the reason why she was able to come here in 1994 and mm -hmm. the reason why she has been able to ascend to a congressional seat. So when we say fuck Ilhan Omar, it's because she's an ethnic bigot. Just so y'all know, because there's a lot of racist white people who say fuck Ilhan Omar. And so just so y'all know, no, we don't fuck with her because she's anti-Black American. So fuck her. And I hope white people save her because Black Americans won't. And that's why she was sitting there trying to feed that lie to a bunch of white people in Zoom, not realizing that Black people with phone numbers or white sounding names who weren't showing their pictures were in that room to listen. Mm -hmm. so should, I, should I get back to running this? What were we well, gonna say? Let me, let, me, let me say this. I'm from Minnesota. That's oh, not yeah. the only reason. That's right. hmm. Like, w w there's been plenty of like interviews that she's done with like Black Americans who have asked her what exactly she's doing for Black Americans, and she never has an answer. Hmm. And not only that, like she never spoke up about the Muhammad Noor shit. That's their community. That's the Somali community. What was the Muhammad Noor? What happened to Muhammad Noor? Was that, was that the cop? Yeah, the cop that, you know, he's like the mo only cop that really got some time behind killing, you know, a motherfucking citizen like that. Not right, even the white lady. that yes, Australian right, yeah. white lady. She was. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So she like she if she's not even going to step up and be like a defender of her own community because she knows that it's not going to be like something that's going to be to her advantage politically, you know, she's going to throw us under the bus. Yeah, absolutely. Every chance she gets. Thank That's you for real. that, because uh, I be forgetting that you live in her district. In the great white north, yeah. Yeah, just yeah, just so you can call her out on that shit. And I'm pretty sure black organizers in the city would be there for that, because the black organizer who she called out was pissed off, because she's like, how are you going to call me out because you ain't did your work? Mm. Yeah, I mean, and the fucked up part about it is that, you know, black Americans, Eidos in Minnesota, we make up such a small percentage that she can be the black representation in this state and not even need our vote like she can get in there just off of white people and other ethnic groups that's how well, like and that's, just and that's why i think it's up to ados to let us let them know that we hate her right because yeah. a lot of times white people be voting for the black person because they think that black person's gonna do something for the black community they don't realize that that black person ain't ados and they're not us mm-hmm yeah, and they think that they she's really like care. super progressive because she she runs with the talking points of the Justice Democrats, but she's not she's not in it for like trying to like have some justice for us. Like that's not her game. Her game is just the like up her own personal pro profile and like she's a careerist. Mm -hmm. That's it. And most of these people are. And this is why I keep saying what I'm saying. Like 
what we need is not coming from electing a magical politician. It's coming from us building massive movements on the ground where they're afraid of us. For policy. Like, that's what it mm -hmm. really boils down to. Like, if we really going to mm -hmm. do this, we got to let people know, like, you're not going to be able over to personalities. Yep. Policy over yeah. personalities. Uh, if you look at the history of asylum, it's based, it's based on religious persecution, things of that nature. Now, you know, we're painting asylum with a broader brush of where if there's violence in your home country, you, you deserve, yeah, to, you deserve to get asylum. Yes, I know that. So you deserve to get asylum. And well, I don't, I don't know if that, if that should be the case, if we should just accept anyone from, ev from everywhere just because they're escaping a bad situation. I don't think that that automatically grants you asylum. First, Would before, you argue that your mom could be one of those people? I would absolutely argue that my mom, under different circumstances, could have been one of those people. So it is a very touchy situation, me being a Mexican-American, and noting that my mom has become successful, and it is hard, but at the same time, we have a problem already with poverty in this country. We have a problem with veterans who aren't getting the care that they need after, after literally getting blown up for, for the right for us to be here right now and have this discussion. And I think before we start taking in everyone else and their problems, we need to address the problems that we have in this country now. Anyone that wants Ooh, to respond stop, to him? My stop, issue stop, stop. is that stop. some of these ideas... Like, he is, he is really on some let's look out for American citizens first shit. And mm. honestly, because he considers himself an American, he considers himself white. But, but he even, considers himself a white American, mm. not just white. He considers himself a white American. You'll see that with the Colum with the white Colombian chick too. But keep going, Mud. Yeah, I'm just saying, like he ha he has he doesn't see a connection with motherfuckers in another country. He sees a connection with the motherfuckers in this country. Now. Whether he's like, whether it's like some strictly racial, I, I, see, I identify as white, therefore I don't want to be, you know, associated with other Mexican shit. That's a little bit too deep into his psychology and I don't, I don't really know and I don't really care. That's fair. The point, the point being is that like what Democrats are losing in this fight is the fact that they, weren't, they aren't willing to talk about putting American citizens first. Like as fucked up as Donald Trump is, that rhetoric rings true and it like it has an effect on a huge swath of people. If you co-opt that message, if you co-opt that message, then you can start like taking some of that taking some of that ground that Republicans have have had for like decades. Mm -hmm. And we just give up that ground because like I I why am I saying we? But like Democrats just give up that ground because they think it's some cool shit like to be against America when they're trying to be in the American government, which makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. John, you got anything on that? Yeah, man. Yeah, I am really absolutely right, man. Like, word up. Like, you really don't give a fuck about the honest. You're like, this this is this is funny as a motherfucker. This should this should show you the power of two things, citizenship and whiteness, like. This is a white mm -hmm. dude. I don't give a fuck what nobody told me. My grandma would tell me real shit. I don't give a fuck. He's from Mexico, Chile. He's a white dude. He's, this is a white American. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, whose mother came here illegally, who's against illegal immigration, right? So that's like, mm -hmm. you feel me? Like, real shit. Like, so he on some shit. Like, he made it. He done got his shit. He like, real shit. Like, it, it doesn't matter how I feel about it. He let like, you know how he feel about it. He like, my mama made it. It's like, Vinny came here illegally. She crossed the border like eight times to get over this motherfucker. And now I was born here. I'm a citizen. Fuck that. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. even though I do think it is some racial shit in there, I think that he on some old, I think he, I think he a white supremacist. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, not even, you feel me? Not even talking about, I think he a white supremacist. But at the end of the mm -hmm. day, it's just funny how that dynamic is crazy. He's a Mexican. You know what I mean? Like, Canelo Alvarez, you know, Canelo Alvarez is a white Mexican. He look Irish, yeah, he's yeah. Mexican. I mean, like, they, they show the whole dynamic of their community and shit. That shit is just funny as a motherfucker. Like, this is a whole white man but who mother came here illegally. Mm -hmm. So you fight, so, for, so that shit is, this shit is nuts. Like, in, in Negroes, we out here starving and shit. Homeless, in the mm -hmm. hood, fucked up. This is, this, you feel me, for years and years. This is crazy, yo. But and we are, the, we are the American citizens that they need to be looking out for instead of, like, like mm -hmm. even though he's probably not talking about us, He's probably of talking course. about the white people, but mm -hmm. fuck it. Like, we are the motherfuckers that deserve these resources instead of motherfuckers that aren't even citizens of this country. Yeah, but that that also goes back to the the open borders thing, right? Because every country prioritizes their citizens, right? 
every country on the planet prioritizes their citizens. That's the purpose of citizenship. It's to prioritize the distribution of resources. That is the only purpose of citizenship. Otherwise, there would be no citizenship. You see what I mean? Yeah. So, so if and the only people that are playing the game of prioritize everybody but us is these these weirdos on the left who I feel very strongly have been co-opted by by um by force by corporate forces, right? Whether that be uh, people in Silicon Valley of all hues, uh, meaning of, of all races and ethnicities, um, that are in Silicon Valley trying to get cheap labor from India and and other places, right? Though these are the same people who are telling us as black people that we don't deserve anything special, we should just fold into this class argument, right? Very same people, right? <laughs> down to the individual level, not just groupings, but down to the individual level, right? Who will say, okay, let's get all these H1B visas and fuck all these Negroes with tech with tech experience and 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 training and education, right? But they don't because they want citizen to count citizenship to count when they want it to count, and it never counts for us. We can never use it for our advantage ever. So we have to be very careful when our dealings with these people. Well, I'm that's sorry, why when we start talking about how we want full citizenship, they start talking about open borders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all, all this is to counter our, our our growth as a our our increasing awareness as a political entity. I think that's a good phrasing for it. Mm. All right. All right, we ready? Yeah, yep. please do. All right, let's rock. This is why they might have some aspects set in reality. It creates a sort of hysteria and it creates a sort of anti-immigrant sentiment where my brother who was born here, people always tell him go back to his country. And the thing about ICE and some of the bills that are going on right now are not just, you know, they're not just deporting criminals. There are mothers, there are families, actual families that are being Well, coming to this country illegally in itself makes you a criminal. To, if you come you to this country illegally, you, you love finish, to cut man. people off. Okay. Um, there, there. It is. It is separating families. is very divisive. Why? Why didn't he have such sentiments against his own? I'm gonna let her keep going, but I love that word divisive. Right? Mm. Anytime you want to do something that people don't like, it's divisive. Mm. Wives. He seems to love immigrants in his bedroom. So I don't. I don't understand. Not to be vulgar, but I'm saying is just keeping it real. So I've been trying to talk for a while. So like, yeah, yeah, I want to yeah, yeah. talk about your last comment. Like, oh, Trump said these things. Do you consider this racist? That, that makes racism seem rhetorical, like as if it's a rhetorical device instead of it being like a systematic issue that's actively destroying lives, like family separation. So like for people to decide, well, is this racist? Just by the sound of it is kind of silly to me in the fact, because the fact that separating a family is racism. Slavery was racism and it, it worked off NATO slavery. Um, separating these families at the border is, uh, is slavery. And uh, talking about these families that are coming over, why are they coming over? We talked about MS-13, you called them rapists, gangbangers, so on and so on. But those are American gangs. They're created in a very particular form of carceral racism. And they were deported back to these countries, and, these, and they, they weren't even from there. They were raised here. They developed these types of habits in order to exist within a racialized American economy. Yeah, but they're also in those countries. So, because they got deported there by the U.S., you created that problem, and also for the fact she that didn't. Ooh, hold on, 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 you already know what you want to say. Wow. That nigga shoot hard like a motherfucker. <laughs> he did it. He knew it was the, he, he, he did it. He couldn't help it. It's slavery. You feel me? Because like, he's in America. And it, and because you know everything girl, is slavery. Which slavery. being being beat and forced to work for free for generations and your children being taken for them to work for free and have more children and for four and for 256 years and then 100 years of white racial terrorism is the same as you illegally coming to a country and then that's the same thing so voluntarily coming here is the same thing as being forced to come here okay keep going that's that's really it's really weird mud you got anything before we go no i mean yeah i i think that it, it, like you guys said he's just trying to fucking use this like the slavery as the you know the keyword to kind of 
make everything seem the same. Like it is not. Like no, you can't. <laughs> you can't just you can't just throw slavery out there like that. Like I, yeah. I don't. It's a buzzword. Yeah, absolutely. Especially yeah, buzzword. Especially like you try to do it with the gang shit now. Like motherfucker, get out of here. And like, <laughs> oh man, hey, like, yo, you got yeah, this shit crazy. My bad, my bad. Like, it's not yeah. even like it's not even like the Latino gangs fuck with us in prison. No, like it's 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 a totally they are on their own doing their own thing. So I I I, I don't like how they be doing this shit. Like they like but to America play the line. created those gangs, so it's slavery. <laughs> that's that's la- it's, la- it's slavery. See that that's crazy. He did it real slick though. Like yo, that shit. I mean, you separating them. Nah, did you catch the, the did you catch the slavery. Colombian the what? Colombian chick say slavery? She was offended too. <laughs> I know. That's it's that's bad when saying. it's bad when you agree with the fucking white Latino fucking Republicans on the fucking panel, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it's fucked up because like some of the shit that like both sides are saying, it, it has some validity to it, mm-hmm. but it's like they're both playing games to not tell yeah. the full truth. Yeah, and that, and that's a very good point, man. Everybody's trying to walk that walk that thin line of trying to live an American life, uh, no matter how they got here, and trying to live the quintessential American life and leave Negroes outside at the same time. Everybody's walking that tightrope. Everybody. Left and right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, absolutely. When I say Negroes, I mean American descendants of slavery, not black folks, not people of, of African descent from other places. Well, okay, because okay. shit, because people from a- other groups were, well, yeah, they were Negro, but mm. Negro and Negro, you know what the fuck we saying. Quit, quit, mm. quit with the semantics. Yeah, but I want to be clear because you know how people play these games. You know, they get comments. They show do. They show do. They get them comments and act silly. Man, yeah, not even just mm. the comments. All right, ready for me to keep playing? Because we still haven't got, we, this is only like four. I feel like I had mm. like six or seven. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm going to shut up. I'm going to try to, too. <laughs> You you were talking about the American position all day, so I, I created Ameri- I used it as a rhetorical device for the American position that deported these people. Right. So let's talk about the fact that you guys brought up that family and separation is racist. I have a big problem when they're using children at the border to get into this country that is not their children. So either there's DNA tests or we're going to have to separate you to make sure that that child belongs to that parent. But there's this thing called human nature. I feel like, I don't so know, you're okay behind that people, makeup, so you're okay you just like people. lost You just insulted her. Of course I you're did. in your feelings. I don't care. Okay. You're okay. Okay. Nobody told me I'm in my feelings. I'm not feeling some kind of way. Let's talk about the 11 million documented immigrants that are here. What is the first thing that comes to mind when I say that? Let's go around. I think we should give them citizenship. And that might surprise you guys, but I do think they're they're already here. They've been here for a while. They're in our schools. They're they're in our restaurants. They're, you know, they're they're every they're everywhere. They're a part of us. They should be given citizenship. I think I agree with him that a lot of them that have been here, maybe they should get amnesty. I think you know they've been here for so long. They're pretty much American by this point. But there are some that they don't represent American values and. They shouldn't be here. <laughs> what exactly are American values? Uh, murder, Stealing, murder. No, I can tell you, life, liberty, and freedom. It's right in our constitution. It's right in our constitution. to that question and then you It's in our constitution. The life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. That is the American dream. I have an American passport. I'm a citizen. I wasn't born here, but I let's keep going around. Let's keep going around. I hear a lot of things, too, like just amnesty, you know, at the snap of a finger. I mean, a lot of them, you know, they're criminals. I think they got to be deported. A lot of them, you know, their families, and you know, they, they've earned their their chance at, at becoming citizens. I almost find it disgusting that people are we're really talking about how to legitimize like the life of a human being. Thank you. Like, why? Be, so they should be given citizen citizenship because of this, right? I think people should be granted human dignity. Period. No matter if you're a. Pal- what? So. <laughs> so I'm sorry I cut him off, but yeah, no, okay. So I feel that I should be. I feel like I've always believed deep down in my soul that I should have been a Swedish black woman. So Sweden, I need you to give me my citizenship as a human <laughs> right because America has not treated me well and y'all have really good social welfare programs in Sweden and I would like to become a Swedish citizenship so Swedish citizen so I can take advantage of everything that you have built in your country because as a human being I deserve to be in your country it's my right <laughs> that makes sense yeah 
I mean, it's it. my right. It's my right to be Swedish, yeah, God yeah, damn it. I think because citizenship is a real thing. It is a as as we've talked about before. It is how it is a is one of the things that decides how how resources are distributed. It is a real thing, and it is the thing that that exists. And that's why Sweden should give me that goddamn resources. Goddamn, damn I'm human. right. Damn I'm right. I'm human. <laughs> I brought these man made borders. <laughs> <laughs> so where the fuck I want citizen of the world. I'm a citizen of the world. Yeah, I think yeah. I, I think yeah. Everybody that deserves Illuminati it. bullshit. It's your <laughs> fucking borders. Borders and shit. Yeah, I agree. I agree one hundred percent. Everybody deserves human dignity. Right. I agree one hundred percent. Now, at the same time, these every nation has laws, and if you and every nation has borders that they patrol, and they spend a lot of money patrolling them because it's very important how you distribute resources and who gets and who doesn't get them, so on and so forth. Now, but at the same time, we still don't have full citizenship, right? What does citizenship mean, right? Does citizenship mean, okay, I can call myself an American and get zero benefit from it? Is that what it mm -hmm. is? Or what, are they looking for all the rights, all the benefits, and all the responsibilities? Because there's all three of those, rights, responsibilities, and benefits, right? Mm -hmm. So... Part of those, let's go, let's go, let's look for, for, for our purposes. The most important piece of that is responsibilities. If you want to be a citizenship here, that makes you partially responsible for what this country is and was before you got here and when your family got here, right? There are existing problems here that need to be dealt with, right? Particularly in our, and again, in our, for us, because this is our show, fuck, fuck you. Um, <laughs> Fuck you very much. Fuck you very much. Yeah, I'm sorry. I want to be. I want to be rude. Fuck you very much. Uh, <laughs> so let's be clear that just because you become a citizen and you weren't here when uh, the worst of the worst was happening to us, that when you get here, you don't have to worry about it because your family wasn't here. Your family wouldn't be here if it wasn't for us, right? There would be no land of opportunity without us, right? So I want to make that part clear. Anybody else got anything on that? And then I'm going to leave y'all. Ha ha. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, <sighs> this thing where like he's trying to say citizenship is like interchangeable with humanity is fucking insanity. Mm -hmm. Like just because you snuck into the fucking country doesn't mean we owe anything to you. Exactly. Like for, like like I, I get that we shouldn't like treat you like inhumane, inhumanely, but just because we're not giving you the benefits of being a citizen because you haven't earned that right doesn't mean that we're treating you inhumanely. And That's true. And I also think like the fucked up part about this is that black Americans have been citizens for the longest and we don't get treated humanely. So what the fuck are you talking about? Like this is this is this is craziness to me. And and the fucking the craziest part about it is that the most conservative motherfuckers who were on this panel, they they flipped the script. They did. Before, they, <laughs> they did. Like, fuck all these motherfuckers that you know didn't get here in here the right way. But now that they're talking about amnesty, like they 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 with it. That's and, because they all rasa. At the end of the day, they all rasa. They all the same, they all they all they they all fight for their people. Yeah, and honestly, like right or wrong. Yeah, but honestly, I don't, I don't know, I don't know if, if like just deporting all these motherfuckers or doing amnesty, which one would be the best, best solution that would, you know, that would work out the best for everybody. But, but it's a discussion that needs to be had, and part yes, of the problem with the left is that they're trying to, they're trying, not even trying to have the discussion, right? That's, that's one of the, the biggest problems with with the with the left, and, and which is the purpose, of, one of the purposes of our show. Is that the left doesn't even want to have the discussion, which again leads me to believe that they've been co-opted by by powerful forces that want open borders so they can have cheap labor. But go ahead. I'm sorry, Mug, go ahead. Yeah, but that's the thing. Like we can't keep doing this every 20, 40 years. Like we mm -hmm. have to see this shit out. And that's the problem. Like nobody wants to have a serious discussion about immigration so that we could figure this shit out. And and Mud, say that again about not being able to do this every 30, 40 years. I'm 35. Fucking Reagan did this shit in my lifetime. He did amnesty. So yeah. so we can't keep doing this over and over again. So and yeah, this and is 
Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm not even gonna say it because I might end up having to cut it out. But y'all know how I feel about the uh y'all know how I feel about birthright citizenship. Hmm. And that's and that's a that's a that's another good important point, Sam, is that these birthright citizenship that these folks are taking um, birthright yeah. citizenship was put was that fourteenth amendment, I believe. I believe yeah, I think so. 14th. Yes, sir. Yeah. 14th. 14th mm-hmm. Amendment, part of the 14th Amendment was birthright citizenship, which is there for to 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 say to prove that we we as uh, African Americans or uh, the descendants of slaves and former slaves were actually citizens, right? That's where that's where the whole thing comes from. And again, just like immigration, the 1967 Immigration Act, which opened the doors for more uh, for more uh, darker hued uh, <laughs> uh, people to come into the country through through legal immigration, another door they got kicked down by us for us. So then uh, we also and and uh, like like Mud often says that there's need to be some respect put on our name <laughs> when people come busting into the and coming across busting across the border. All right. Uh, go ahead. I just want to. I just want to say this last piece. Like, the the problem with this whole discussion is that no one wants to be like have the hard say the hard part, which is that some motherfuckers just aren't going to be allowed in the country. We are gonna have mm-hmm. to stop some of these motherfuckers from coming in, and that's mm-hmm. what the real immigration conversation needs to be about. But nobody wants to say that out loud in politics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fair. John, you got anything real quick? Hey, I think it's funny that, that this motherfucking uh the the white dude that's a conservative, this white Mexican dude, you feel me? Like as as we know, like earlier in the segment, he was saying he pulled a wall and shit like that. But it came to amnesty, though. You see that? You feel me? Because his mom came in illegally. Mm-hmm. So he, he said that she crossed right across the border two times and worked at Taco mm-hmm. Bell. Mm-hmm. And that they him. three times. So be honest, you like be honest, I'm keeping real with you. Yeah. Uh, you an anchor baby, white dude. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Anchor baby, man. Like, I, don't, I said it. I don't, anchor baby, bro. Anchor baby. You know what I mean? Like, like I'm, and I'm not saying like you know the way Trump say anchor the anchor babies. Like, that's not saying mm-hmm. you know, I'm not. I'm saying to this white supremacist white dude, like, bro, you an anchor baby, bro. You know what I mean? Like, real. So you was an anchor baby. So the fact that he was like, I'm for the wall and all this other shit, and you feel me? Like, you got to be hard on immigration. They was like, you want to make amnesty? He was like, yeah. You think about his family? See that? He's self interested. He mm-hmm. knows that he wants to make his grandmama and them a citizen, like, because he know what the benefits that come from that. And they look, and he look white. Now I know they probably white Mexicans. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing. Yeah. I don't got. But that, but that that goes that goes something that, and that that goes again. What you you point one of the points you made earlier. We are talking about whiteness and 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 the the power of whiteness and citizenship here, right? So he wants he he wants to limit he wants to limit um who can come in and do what his mother did, right? Mm-hmm. But this is what white folks do all the time. This is this is the the power of whiteness is that these laws don't have to don't have to apply to you if you put if you have if you have the wealth or if you can p- apply the political pressure. These laws don't really have to apply to you, right? Laws uh, laws and rules and regulations and statutes those things are um, theoretical, right? This is and this is what this is what this is this is what this conservatism is built on. This reality is 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 um is what you say it is, right? Mm-hmm. doesn't matter what the truth is. It's what I believe. And lefties are like this. Well, I guess human beings are like this to a degree, but the, yeah. the both both sides, both edges of the political spectrum are like this. Rules and regulations, the laws, statistics, none of that shit matters. It's what you can make happen or stop from happening, right? It's about how much power you have. This is the this is the, how they function, this, and it's the reality, right? So... What he's to my, I, I agree with you, John. Is that what he's thinking is okay? All these people are evil except my people. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, um, it's a bullshit. It's yeah, a bullshit. exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah all the stuff too. that's going on is terrible. It shouldn't happen except for my people, right? Yeah. So, um, again, he he is really white. <laughs> Like I'm not even like I'm not Chicano. I'm like, this, what is this nigga white as hell? Like, what the fuck is this motherfucker? Like, <laughs> what? You know what I mean, like, yeah. he's a Latino. Put them tight ass jeans on. Yeah, he's absolutely. These jeans tied in an old but, girl. Get rips in them. All right, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, nah, but, nah, but I was, but I also just wanted to say, like, the thing about that, our whole thing, our whole thing, our immigration stance is basically built, built off of like, like we've been citizens for so long, but we haven't been fully enfranchised yet. And yet, mm-hmm. for me, the argument it should be in America, how do we got a fully enfranchised? We, that's why reparations. That's you feel me. The, that's that's the main step mm-hmm. to start. Make us whole. Absolutely. Us. Make us Bring whole. Up, we like, kick down the borders. You know, I help you kick down the borders if you make us whole. Shit. 
It's I'm saying, man, I might be with it. At I don't know if I'm going to be with it. I might be with it. Listen, but you MG, the MG, after that Nigerian woman on Clubhouse told us that it's first her family, then her tribe, which was Igbo, or, or something like that. Sure and then jam. after that, it's her country, which is Nigeria. <laughs> and then after that, she might fuck with us Negroes here in our own country. Oh, no. Oh, she got a priority. I, right. I, I ain't, listen, MG, I ain't never kicking down border the first. Y'all can call me what you want. Listen, I'm not going to get out here and build no wall, but I ain't kicking down no borders either. Because when I tell you people of color talk to me greasier than white people, Mm -hmm. it'd be the people of color who be telling me that they don't owe me shit and that they came here and got their shit together and fucked me so no. maybe y'all yeah. should talk to us negroes a little bit better cause y'all okay. not white people yeah. we Man. cuss them like... out too but y'all not white people y'all still don't own or run this motherfucker yet and y'all mm -hmm. talk to us like you do yeah, and honestly, with this whole discussion, I want to be clear. I'm not, I don't have no hate for immigrants. My whole thing is about the immigration shit. But if we're going to be keeping it funky, if it's fuck me, it's fuck you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because it's funky. Yeah, you know, it's, not like, it's not like that. It's just that we just getting focused on ourselves. I got nothing against them. I don't want, like I already said, I don't want nothing, I don't want nothing bad to happen to them people like that. Like, at the end of the day, it's like, yo, you want to come over here? They skipping it. They act like this is a post-racial society. You know, no, that's I, the whole thing. Because if you deal with Negroes, mm -hmm. that means that now we dealing with a now we dealing now we dealing with that. You might start getting into that society. You got to deal with us first, though. You talking about uh, immigration, yeah. making him a citizen when we ain't citizens. We not even fully enfranchised citizens yet because mm -hmm. we didn't get yeah. back what you stole from us. So what the fuck? Like what the fuck is it? What the fuck are you talking about? Like, I, like what the fuck you talking? I ain't got like I'm saying. I ain't got nothing. I called the white dude an anchor baby. It's just funny because he's a Republican. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> he, yeah, he, yeah. He being a hit, I'm like, no, you an anchor baby, motherfucker. Like, who fuck is this? Shut up. But, yeah, no, but he, like, but, he, but, he you... but again, he's white. He doesn't consider himself an anchor baby. He got nothing to do with any illegal activities. You know, his mom <laughs> came here illegally. You know what I mean? And that's, <laughs> that's and, but he did make one good that. point. He did make a good yeah. point. We as black people, we get punished for illegal activities for the, in the blink of an eye. Right, everything. People, yeah, everything. we get locked up for putting our kids in the wrong school district because we and want our we, kids to go to different, better schools. There was, there was a guy. Elementary before, schools, we get guy, locked up. But you guys remember the guy? He got twenty five years for stealing a candy bar. Y'all remember that guy? You know yeah, what I mean? and Wait, all man. those teachers that they locked up in Atlanta yeah, over but, that, yeah, over that high, over that like s, over that like fucking school test. Um, mm -hmm. Drama, Absolutely. but then they let fucking Absolutely. bitch ass Aunt Becky from Full House do like mm -hmm. less than twenty years. I mean, do less than two months when mm -hmm. her charges if she was black that was like a twenty year bid, and that yep. was federal time. So they should have really like gave her some time. Mm -hmm. But because yeah. she white, she got to skate. But the black yeah, so, people, yeah. So you're telling us the people who are who are punished worse than anybody in this country, which is a fact that people that cross the border illegally should not be treated like they broke the law. And that's supposed to make sense to you. Because they say people aren't illegal, but it's not oh, that I, black see, that's people... why I'm very, very careful with my language. I say they broke illegal. This is an illegal activity based on American law. Oh, no, law. I agree with yeah, what yeah. you're saying. You know, yeah. I'm just throwing out the Yeah, I see. I, I, they... I agree. I agree. Yeah. No, I'm just throwing out the bullshit that people be saying, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, it's, it's, you know, we mm -hmm. shouldn't, you know, Pe those people are coming here for a better life. Well, Tyrone sells drugs so he can feed his fucking three-year-old daughter. Yeah, absolutely. And when he was working at McDonald's at the end of the, every time he got his check, it wasn't enough money to keep the roof over his baby mom's head and keep food in his daughter's mm -hmm. belly. So yep. he chose he chose the life of bullshit so he could feed his kid versus working and not having enough money to feed his kid. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, but that is wrong. But it's okay for you to make a decision to make the life of you and your family better by mm -hmm. committing an illegal activity. Yeah, exactly. But, so, yeah, so we're that. faced. So we're seeing. So we're we're seeing is, and then another signal to me that this is, this is this is this whole open borders thing is driven by the rich and powerful. Is that we are criminalized, right, by the same grouping of people that wants to talk about kicking the borders down to get cheap labor you see yeah. what i mean 
So it's all right for us to be criminalized for everything we do, the way we dress, maybe that for for wearing your for wearing your pants down low, you people getting tickets and kids going to jail. Yeah, I remember that shit. You know what I mean? It was for for fashion, I don't look at nobody's ass. I don't look at a dude's ass anyway. But that's a fashion. This was a fashion thing. You know what I mean? So so we can get criminalized criminalized for anything we do as black people. But people who are actually doing an illegal activity of crossing the border, no matter what was chasing them across that border, right? Because we have problems here that we got to deal with, as Sam was said. So we're supposed to be allowed, we're allowed to be criminalized. We should be criminalized, but everybody else, eh, maybe, maybe not. I, I just wanted to put that out there. But of course, that's going to make me anti immigrant as soon as this thing drops. But go ahead. Now you know, we <laughs> all, it's the truth. Mm. But the thing is, we're you can't even have a conversation, that. right? And, and the that's conversation a, makes you anti. So just even by the fact that we want to have this discussion, no matter how we personally feel, no matter what our personal relationships are to people in that community, we're mm -hmm. automatically anti because we just yeah. want to have a discussion. And, but again, that, but it goes to there, there are no activists. There are no real activists that don't, don't want to discuss their issues, right? So if you want silence, how do you create activism from silence? Again, that goes back to my my theory that this is this this whole this whole uh, this entire um, uh, immigration thing has been co-opted by people with, with money and power. Right? Only money only people with money and power want silence ar around a, a critical issue. They're the only people that that function like that because the status quo serves them. Right? Mm -hmm. So for me, if I'm if I'm truly an activist, right, I want to discuss these issues because I want to get to solutions. But if you want silence, something's wrong. Something's absolutely wrong. All right. That's again, that's why. Yeah. We got a video? What? <laughs> Go ahead. I know, right? <laughs> Telling y'all. See, this is no, I think I have one more no, long be 30 clip. Minutes, right? I thought it was going to be 30 baby. minutes. No, no, no. The actual clips are 30 minutes, not us uh, talking. You know like oh, the, the we're full. Like to be, we're gonna do a part three. If you're an American baby. <laughs> no, you just go leave. Like there's a report out there that says that it's gonna <laughs> it's take cold. almost two years to identify the thousands of families that were separated at the border. Who thinks it was immoral to separate families at the border? I am for people, and I feel like the things, the hate, the stereotype, it's affecting real human beings and causing people not to see people as people, but as objects, as this thing with an emotion attached to it. And that level of discrimination is causing families to be separated. People are losing their lives, they're dying. And that is the issue I have with it. Anyone that does not see it immoral, what do you have to say? I mean, okay, you, I just okay. want to say the only reason I don't see it as immoral is just because like you or me or any of us here were to commit a crime here in America, our, we would be separated from our family. We'd go to jail. Like it, it's the same thing that would happen to anybody. Woo. Boom. Woo. I'm gonna keep playing unless somebody had anything to say, but she said yeah, what we yeah. were saying. Yeah. Yo, I, I mean that that is a valid point. Mm. I'm not necessarily with the uh, separating the family shit. I say deport all those motherfuckers if that's what they're doing. Think. I'm like, you gonna send them home, send them home no, together. But she was making a good yeah, point though, stuck. right? So like my yeah, uncle has been say. my uncle has been in and out of jail for 35 years, right? Off and on. So mm. when he goes to jail. He does that shit by himself. Yeah, we don't go yourself, with him. Yeah. We're not in his cell with him. And mm -hmm. to be honest, I can I can probably name on my two hands how many times anybody in the family went and saw him when he was in jail. Okay? Mm -hmm. So 35 years, and in these 10 digits, we ain't seen him 10 times. I ain't never went and saw that nigga when he was in jail. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, like, we also got to think about how so many... Black families have been starved of resources and that right. has caused a lot of dysfunction. So mm -hmm. when we get when CPS gets called at a called on us and our families get separated, no one is crying tears for us. Not, no one not gives a, a drop. Fuck. Not a drop. So, like honestly, like, you know, I'm not necessarily on shorty side with that because I'm not with separating families at all in any situation. Agreed. Agreed. Of course, we're not for we're yeah, not we're for, not for that. But, she, but she's making a valid. I think the, our our point is she's making a valid point. Yeah, yeah, we need some consistency. That's all it is. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly.
somebody else who committed a crime in America. And, I, and, and crossing the border illegally is committing a crime. I would also like to say that you, a, there needs to be some criminal. sort of... Misdemeanor. You can't just assume that these people are families. You need to validate these things. You can't just take it as face, oh, this is your mother? Fine. Because it's been documented that that's not the case, that, that, that the coyotes are using children and as cover, saying that they're their dad for protection. You need to validate these things. You can't just take someone's words and, and take it for face value. And just to play devil's advocate, devil's advocate here. Imagine if that was your mother with you. Um, but it was his mother. Would you feel okay if your mother and you were separated? No, I would be sad, absolutely. I didn't, I never said that <laughs> separating the families is, is horrible was. because it is horrible <laughs> and it is saddening. And, it is, and just look but at the images of, of the conditions. That stopped. It is sad, but at the same time, just because something is sad or just because it's unfortunate doesn't mean that you can't have, you need to have some sort of way to validate these things. You can't just take someone's words and say, oh, this is my father. Okay, good to go. The people who are talking about this are unaffected by this. The people that this is happening to are Central American indigenous communities. The, Claudia Gomez was a mom Maya woman or, or little girl, really, who got shot at the border. There are families being celebrated. These are indigenous children. And this is literally replicating the Indian Removal Act. This is this, not only displacing indigenous communities from their pueblos, but also separating them from their families, which is the history of the United States. And this is they're literally a continuing. Yes, they're, they're do, do out of force. Not My, always. At, back home, I came here. My cousin stayed there. And guess what happened? At 18. He died. That is the reality that we're escaping. And unfortunately, these gangs, these uh, 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 instability here. of our countries, mm -hmm. often come from the United States, going to our communities and trying to start a business there by displacing us. Yeah, you, but that was the past. Th this we're is the still going on. I we're in the present. Yeah. 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 Still, like, it's still today. going on. I feel like it's, you have more invested yourself in another country than here. You because, care more about another country this than is, here. Oh. This is my problem. You know, these are borders. These are man-made borders. I don't care. I care about people. Sadly, period. This is, that's just I, I know. The way I know. I know. Like, I know. There's a border. There's a border right now in Colombia. In Colombia. Now, I'm, and this is gonna be my last point, since I'm gonna be hated. Damn it, MG. Sorry. This, since I'm gonna be hated anyway, I'm gonna make it real. All this virtue signaling about. I care about people more than I care about borders. No other country functions like this. No country in the world functions like this. Yeah, all borders are man-made. Even the ones you agree with are man-made, right? The street that you the, the street that you lived on in your previous country was a street, right? And there were lines. It's a line. It's a street. It's a line. Whatever the fuck it is, right? It was man-made. The fucking goat path is the only thing that wasn't man-made, right? It is what it is, right? There are laws in place. If you break the laws, now I sound like a conservative there now, but if you break the laws, <laughs> if you, but if you break, but if you cross a border illegally, it is an illegal act, right? And we've got to stop acting as if because you are downtrodden, laws don't apply to you because it, that's not how they treat us. That's not how we've been treated, right? It's historically, this is never how we've been treated, right? So if you're fleeing, problems wherever you are no matter where you're from let's uh, as as mud said let's have some excuse me let's have some consistency we need some consistency if you're fleeing violence and that's the reason why you deserve extra help extra support and let that be let that be the issue but it seems like no everybody wants these things to apply to themselves and forget all about us right so I mean, it is it is what it is, and it also and it goes to not. I, but let's be clear: this panel is not about Black Americans. This is not this is not planning. It's not about us. But there's a lot of things going on here that are reminiscent of what happened to us, or reminiscent of 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 how this country functions um, against us or ignoring us. So it's, I, that's why I feel these things are important. Uh, 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 but, but, uh, Sam, you got anything? No, I'm going to let them ride out because like I said, they got more to say. So I like where she was talking about how you care more about the country you came from than this country. So people can be angry with me about this, but mm -hmm. I am oh, an American. Will. <laughs> well, it's okay. Yeah, I know. But, so so this is what I have to say about this, right? Uh -oh. I'm an American. Mm -hmm. My mother is an American. My grandmother is an American. My Generations. great, great grandmother was an American. My great, great grandmother. You understand what I'm saying? 
Like mm -hmm. my family has been on this soil since at the minimum of 1619. And I have family members that have been on this soil longer than that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you, when she says you care and he says, well, I don't care because, you know, these are man-made borders. I don't have another country to care about. Mm -hmm. I, I depend on what happens here in this country. Mm -hmm. If the United States falls, I have nowhere to run to. Oh, I yeah. have to stay here in it and deal with it. So when people say, well, I don't care about that because it's man-made, I do because I'm here. I have to care about what happens to not only Black Americans, but what happens to all Americans. Because if yeah. this country devolves into chaos, I live here. And I think that's that's a I guess we can call immigrant privilege because you have someplace mm -hmm. else to go if something goes mm -hmm. wrong here. And, and let's it, be I'm sorry to cut you off. MG, no, no, go ahead, man. We gotta we gotta be fucking real. Black people in this fucking country, Ados, we live in violent communities. There is Facts. nowhere for us to go. Mm -hmm. No one We're is taking us poverty. in. Yep. We we deal with gangs. We deal with poverty. Mm -hmm. We deal with lack of economic opportunities, mm -hmm. all of that. Yep. Our people die Corrupt young. We got people dying from, government. from birth to, mm -hmm. to 40 from gun violence. So, yeah. And so, we don't like, get to run off and seek asylum. Mm -hmm. yeah, and look, I might sound cold-blooded on here, but I do care about you know other motherfuckers suffering. I don't want motherfuckers to die in other countries, but honestly, there's nothing I could do about it. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, like I'm a part of a powerless group in a country where we face all of that shit and yep. no one is Every coming to save it. us. Mm -hmm. So, like, honestly, the reason why I sound so cold blooded is because I need to save my own. Mm -hmm. And that's basically it. Listening to Reset Race, you now tuned in to Reset Race. Uh, uh. You're listening to Reset Race, you're now tuned in to Reset Race. What? Put them back on the grill again, we grilling them. Put them back on the grill again, we grilling them. Put them back on the grill again, we grilling them. Back on the grill again, we grilling them. Uh, you're listening to Reset Race. Adels need reparations to make America great. Uh, you're tuned in to Reset Race, we no longer starving while others eat off our plate. No. You're listening to Reset Race, we focused on our justice claim, we know what is at stake, uh, you tuned in to Reset Race, you'll find out we really about justice and really who think, on the edge, go back to U.S. Southern plantations, Pennies, Jim Crow, and mass incarceration, redlining and lynchings, we are old from this nation, you're not about justice if you ain't for reparations, MG the wise one, cousin mother intellectual, Samantha bringing fire, anti-black, we pressing you, no permanent friends and no permanent Enemies, the backbone of the country, the way you need our energy. Ah. Go on, see. Listening to Reset Race, you now tuned in to Reset Race. Uh, uh. You're listening to Reset Race, you now tuned in to Reset Race. Uh, put them back on the grill again. We grilling them, put them back on the grill again. We grilling them, put them back on the grill again. We grilling them, back on the grill again. We grilling them. Uh, you're listening to Reset Race. Adels need reparations to make America make great. America uh, great. You're tuned in to Reset Race. We no longer starving while others eat off our plate. No. You're listening to Reset Race. We focused on our justice plan. We know what is at stake. Uh, you're tuned in to Reset Race. You'll find out we really about justice and really who fake. Uh, Until you do right by me, everything you think about is going to crumble. Hey, this is MG from Reset Race. We're growing and so is our mission. Because of this, we're looking for volunteers to join our team. The skills we need most right now are researchers, video editors, and men and women to do voiceovers. If you're interested in helping out, go to activifypress.com slash volunteer. Again, activifypress.com slash volunteer. We hope to hear from you soon. Peace and justice for myself and the rest of the Reset Race crew.